Today we are going to be creating an abstract rollout animation using Maya and the Mesh. So let's quickly get into it. So first thing I'm going to do is quickly switch my menu to animation. This will give us the access to the Mesh. And for some reason if you don't have the Mesh network here, you can go to Windows, Setting and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And if you scroll down here, uh, you should see something called as uh, the Mesh. Yeah, there you go, mash.mll, make sure it's loaded and you'll be good to go. Alright, so the first thing that we are going to be creating is the base of our overall design and that is going to be the cube itself. So I'm going to start off by taking this cube and I'm going to change the dimension to something like maybe like 0.5 and 0.5 for the width and the depth. So we have something like this and for the height I'm going to increase it to maybe like 10. Uh, maybe that's too much, let's go for 5. Alright, this looks good and we are good to go. Now from here I'm gonna do is go to the mash network and you can basically click on create mash. It will create a bunch of clones and from here we are good to go. I'm gonna go to my attribute editor and the first thing I'm gonna do is go to mash repro and make sure it's using a GPU. It will be just a little faster for you to calculate everything. Now in the distribution it is the distribution type has been set to linear by default. What I'm gonna do is change it to grid that will give access to this type of grid. Alright I'm gonna change this to something maybe be a 10 by 10 and shift click and soft and harden, harden like this. Alright, so this looks good. Uh, I'm just gonna change the overall dimensions here. I think uh, we need much more room here. So let's make it 10 and let's make it 10. And uh, for the grid, I'm gonna keep increasing the number, maybe like uh, 21 by 21. I think this looks good. And now we have something like this, which looks pretty interesting. Okay, so from here what I'm going to do is change uh, the overall uniformity of this mesh. So I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to add a network here which is going to be, uh, let's take maybe a random network here or maybe let's go for a signal. Alright, and in signal what the signal is going to do is going to add basically some type of noise. Uh, from uh, for us it's going to be the 4D noise and uh, it's going to display the overall geometry here. So here you'll notice that uh, what what you know is doing is it's changing the dimensions of position x, y and z. Uh, we don't have anything for the rotation or the scale. Alright, so here uh, what we want is only the y and not the position x and z. So I'm going to reduce that and I'm also going to reduce this to maybe like 4. This looks quite good. But here it's a pretty randomized and what we want is a bit of a uniformity here. So just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is reduce uh, the step size, step amount. Alright. And also, I'm going to reduce the noise scale. And you will find uh, a pattern something that looks something like this. And uh, so I'm going to just go for maybe like 0 0.03. Here again, you have the time scale if you want to go even lower for that. And again, you can increase the step amount how much you want. I'm going to go for maybe like 20. And from here, if I play this, you'll notice that you get something like this. And from here, I can increase this. I can make even the time scale lower and uh, maybe increase the step uh, size if you want. You can go higher and higher and maybe reduce the amount of position Y. So you have something like this. Maybe I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna tweak some stuff here until I find a good value. Let me go for something like time value here. Alright, and I guess we have to make this too and I'm gonna reduce this to maybe like 25 alright and from here again from here it's totally up to how much depth you want in this if you want you can increase this or maybe decrease this totally up to you I'm gonna keep this too and I'm just gonna increase the noise here alright maybe decrease the step amount maybe like 10 and uh, let's maybe go 60 yeah this looks good this value looks quite good Okay, so once you are done with all of this, you have something like this. Uh, what comes next is adding our more dynamic into here. We are playing more on our, around with the, what we can collide with this. So what I'm going to do is take another primitive that is going to be the sphere. Alright. Bring this out and let's make the overall scale to maybe like 0.2. Alright. And uh, from here again, we are going to create a mash network out of this. Alright, and click on mash and you can't see the clones because it's uh, gone back to the bottom of the scene. And make sure you open the outline, it will be easier for you to manage your stuff. Now, I'm going to go to the attribute editor and again change this to grid. 
and uh, you can't see anything because obviously they are in the middle of the overall scene as you can see here alright so what I'm going to do is to change that I'm going to take something like an offset mode and uh, let's maybe bring this out maybe like 5 or let's go even higher Eight. Right, this seems good and again distribute let's uh, reduce the overall distance between them um, I think this looks quite good and maybe add the uh, one more to the grid y that we will have more to deal with right and I guess I'm going to make this 2 by 2 and this will be 0.5 and now if you look at our sphere or uh, each and every sphere are pretty uh, similar in same size so to change that I'm again I'm going to go to my mass network and let's take a random node with the random node um, alright the position is displaced that is perfectly fine what you want is the scale so I'm going to increase the scale and make sure it is set to uniform scale and uh, let's maybe let's make it 1 alright this looks quite good maybe like 0.5 and uh, in the offset I'm going to reduce this by minus 0.5 that way will have a length of going from negative 0.5 to the positive 0.5 that will give us more good results alright now everything is done if I play this now you will notice that nothing happens the sphere are going to stay in the same place because we haven't applied any dynamic system to it so what I'm going to do is select the sphere here uh, our mash 2 network and let's go to the mash menu and let's uh, wait let's first uh, let's make sure we are using the GPU and here you will find the dynamics, I am going to click on the dynamic node here and uh, the dynamics have been applied, if I play this now you will notice they are falling down but obviously uh, they are not colliding with our overall geometry here and we have to make sure they collide with that thing here so to do that I am going to go to my bullet solver and uh, here I have my mash 1 which is my overall cube here that are going in the signal noisy pattern so I am going to middle mouse click and drop it onto my collider object right so if I play this now there you go so now you have a very nice animation that are going to roll out from here now for the final scene setup what I am going to do is uh, go to my camera and uh, select my camera alright and I am going to take a high focal length maybe 200 and I am going to keep it to something like this alright and let's uh, maybe turn on your film resolution gate and this looks good and I'm going to lock my camera so from here we can get into shading how we can uh, light and shade this and for the shading I'm going to take a simple HDRI just to speed up the process and uh, I'm going to quickly load in my HDRI alright so I've loaded in my GPU and I'm just going to give it a quick uh, IPR render to see what we are working with so we have nice uh, shading and overall pattern going on so the next thing I'm going to do is for the CS I'm going to add a new material uh, science surface let's call this uh, balls and uh, what I'm going to do is add a bit of a roughness here 0.5 that looks good and for the color channel let's click on the checker box here and search for something called as a ramp now this is a native ramp which we do not want what we want is the Arnold's ramp so I'm going to click on the Arnold and uh, select the uh, AI ramp RGB not the float one and uh, select any color that you want so for me it's going to be something like maybe it's like this and uh, let's go for something like alright so we have two colors if I play this now we have this gradient which I don't want so I'm going to set this to none and this one to none as well and now we have something like this so I'm going to just bring them in between like 0.500 and that is perfect and exactly what I want and uh, if you find this a bit too flat what you can do is maybe give it a bit of a stickiness right? that looks good now again for the final thing we have this bottom part I'm going to assign new material let's go to shader sand surface and I'm going to call this cubes and uh, let's keep the roughness to 0.3 and uh, I'm going to just reduce the color here right? maybe like uh, let's take a bit of a punchy color let's go for something like this alright ok so this looks quite good for me again you can play around with the reflection if you want you can add a bit of a reflection uh, but I'm going to keep it a bit rougher since this is our BG. and again you can uh, pretty much uh, render the whole sequence out from here and uh, just play around with it this looks quite good and uh, yeah so that's it 
This was pretty so uh, short and simple and easy to do and uh, nothing much of uh, thing to do. Uh, it's just about thinking of a concept what you can do with mass dynamics. And this is just a taste of it. Again, come up with a great idea, come up with a good color scheme, download a good color palette for you to work on and have fun. If you do create something out of it, uh, share with me. I would love to see yours. And that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.